Hello, and welcome to episode 132 of Things I Learned from Barry Harris. And today I thought we would talk about um, interesting little ways to look at the pivot, or what Barry refers to as a pivot. So for those of you that don't know, let's just talk about what a pivot is. So let's take D7, D7 let's say, and we'll take a D7 scale. And you have to know how to do a bunch of things on the scale. You have to know scale up and down, scale in thirds, scale in triads, scale in four note chords. So let's take that one. This is what a pivot is when Barry says let's pivot a chord. What he would take is, let's say uh, a chord up from the D would be D, F sharp, A, C. There's our chord. And what a pivot is, instead of continually going up D, F sharp, A, C, we're going to hit the D where it is, but then we're going to do the F sharp, A, C down an octave. So we'll do this. So now you have to know every pivot. So you could say, here's the pivot. Let's do it from C, pivot, from the B, sharp and then from the um, from uh, let's see from the E uh, and then back from the D again. so those are all of them now that's a nice way to do a pivot I also made a video where you're talking about because um, those pivots all happen to be starting on a downbeat so that's one two three four or one, two, three, four. So those are really pretty. But then I had made a video talking about how um, when I started on an end, I thought those were wrong, but I was wrong. Really, those starting on an end are beautiful. So, and you'll even recognize certain melodies with this. But if we started on the end, it would be one, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, ah. Uh. One, two, three, four, ah. Uh. One, two, three, four, ah. Uh. But those were all pretty. That's a beautiful little phrase, but using a pivot starting on an end. Then I said, well, what else can we do with a pivot to make it? Because I, I generally, for myself, the pivot from the seventh, I do so often. It's just something that I naturally do all the time. So much to the point where I get sick of it. So I started thinking about, well, what if instead of, you know, because a pivot is also, another way you can think of a pivot is obviously instead of going up C, E, G, B, you're hitting the C where it is and then doing E, G, B down um, an octave. But it's also, if you want to think of it, you hit a note, you go down a sixth, and you come up a triad. That's another way to measure it. So it's note, down a sixth, up a triad. So what I was thinking was, because when we practice our scales, we also sometimes with the triads or with the thirds, so uh, when we start off with triads, let's say, on every degree of the scale, another nice thing to practice before the triads is a half step below each triad, the, the first note of each triad. So instead of D, F sharp, A, it's C sharp, D, F sharp, A. Same thing for E, G, B. It's going to be uh, D sharp, E, G, B. And keep going. Those are nice. But sometimes people play, instead of D, F sharp, A, they'll play D, go down a half step to C sharp, back up to D, and then up the rest of the triad. So they'll say, next one, next one. Same thing down. Love those sounds. Those are really pretty. Okay, so let's get back to the pivot again. Here's our pivot from C, which I said I do over and over again, probably too much. So what if we did, when we did the C, came down the sixth, now that's coming up a triad. So why don't we do that thing that we just worked on? So maybe I'll say. So now we'll do, instead of a phrase like this, or maybe we'll say, now you got something different happening. 
I brought this up in one of the open studio classes that I've been teaching, which I'm there. Uh, I teach about five classes a week there, which are really wonderful. And if you haven't checked it out, you should definitely go to openstudiojazz.com and check them out. They're really super fun. All the teachers there are really great. But we started talking in class and I brought this up. And then one of the people that attends the class, Jeffrey, very good guitar player, he also said, you know, you don't have to just do it for that one. You maybe could do it for the second note too. So I said, what do you mean? And then he did something along the lines like this. So he did the ha hit the note and then went a half step below the note on the second note of the triad. So instead of this, he did this, which I liked very much too. And then he said, but you could also do it on the last note of the triad. So instead of the E, doing it on the E or doing it on the G, he did it on the B. So he said, so that's another beautiful thing. So look, now we just thought of three different ways to play a, um, a pivot. Three new ways. So here is the regular way, which I love very much, obviously, because I use it so much. The second way was, now let's put a half step below the E after we get to it. Now let's put a half step below the G when we get to it. Now let's put a half step below the B once we get to it. So all of these beautiful ways. And then, if you think about it, what if I wanted to do the one below the E, skip the one for the G and the one below the B. So let's see what that sounds like. That's so pretty. So you have to go up the scale like that. Next one. From the third. Now what if we did all of them? Let's see. I love that sound. Those are so pretty. All of those are pretty. So now, what is that? Four or five little different ways that I can practice the pivot. So this is why, like, this is the one thing that I've that I was struck by um, in all the years I was lucky enough to study with Barry, is you would think you really knew how to do something, and then he would bring something else to it. He'd go maybe even a little deeper in it or turn it on its side, and you realize there's so much more to learn from even something so basic as a pivot, and it can really change your playing dramatically. If you, if you really start thinking about things like, well, what are things that I like to play? And then if I overplay them or I overuse them or I'm sick of myself from using them, how can I slightly change them to make them fresh or to make them new or to make, to give me that same feeling of like, oh, I can't believe that that's such a beautiful thing. That's what I feel like Barry was the master at pointing it out so that if you were around him long enough, you started slowly if you could get it. I mean, I, nobody could really think like him because he was such a genius, but you could. it starts to rub off on you and you start to realize things like, man, I have, to, I have to maybe look at it that way. But I thought this was really interesting to take a look at pivots. So let's just do that one. So let's say from the, from the, uh, from the D or from the C. D. F sharp, G, A. Those are so pretty, super pretty. So it's just something for us to be aware of. Sometimes you could take something that's old, like a pivot, old meaning an idea that you've had, and make it new again by just changing it slightly. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short lesson about just possibly doing something new with pivots. Until next time, thanks.